Ladies and gentlemen, what about a big hand for our special guest interview tonight, Amanda Keller and Adolf Stud from Rancid Pope. All right. And now, the interview you all have been waiting for, live from the Larry King Room of the Denton Show, Andrew talks to a man with world sales of over 20 million albums a man described as the last great rock star ladies and gentlemen would you please welcome Andrew Denton and Mr. David To you. Actually, does Spinal Tap give you the total screaming shit stuff? Yeah, it frightened me to death. Yeah, really? Yeah. No, a bit close to the bone. It's going to be very hard to do an interview after build up like that, but we'll try. Jack. Slightly, yeah. That David. was really effective stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It certainly worked. How are you clear. doing? Yeah. All right, we're going to start now with a little question I call the early roots question. David, uh, Actually, rock and roll, heavy rock, yeah. never seems to die. I mean, they throw rap at it, they throw disco at it, they throw grunge at it, but it never dies. Why? It's uh, good therapy, good release for people. You know, nice sweaty music. Yeah, and sex too. Sex is the big. And you guys aren't exactly the quietest crowd in the world, are you? Yeah. <laughs> no, we're yeah, not. A bit of rock and roll for Australia ain't too shabby. Yeah. 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 Actually, this is. Before you joined Deep Purple, you were playing to crowds of a couple of hundred, and then your yeah. first gig with Deep Purple was 20,000. What was that like? That was pretty scary, but yeah. uh, we had fun, you know. Did it freak Screaming you out? and shouting, you get away with it. Is, yeah, well, that's the thing, the, the, he the heavy rock voice. When did you first discover that? Is, is cock rock the right term? Cock rock's pretty close, <laughs> yeah, yeah. pretty close. It's uh, basically, at the beginning, trying to imitate all the, uh, the R&B and the blues singers, yeah. you know, going, well, if they can sound like that, why can't I, you know, so... But how Giving it a go, and then competing, of course, with all of this shit, yeah. you know. We spent a lot of money on this shit, thank you very much, Dave. <laughs> when, did you, when did you first discover you could hit those, those notes? Those when a vicar notes? tried to bribe uh, me with uh, five shillings to sing in the choir. That was before, <laughs> of course, it was bastardised with scotch and uh, cigarettes. Choirs? And all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so you went for the big note, did you? Was it this the end of Casablanca? <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> This don't amount to a hill of beans. David. Oh, yes, indeed. Can you hit one of those notes now? I couldn't, no. Couldn't, I'm fighting a flu, actually. Really? Yes. Not even Australian a one. Wow! <laughs> Is that, that it? Is it? Uh, Andrew Denton, opportunity knocks. <laughs> Thank you very much. The other thing, I'm a bit hot here. Can we have a towel, please? I'm a bit hot, thanks. The other thing that always amazes me oh, is... Oh, Jesus. ...is the, uh, <laughs> would, you, would you care to share? Uh, what's in it? What's in it? Just my sweat. <laughs> this will be worth the towel that sweated in one it's day. It's like the Tom Jones ploy. Oh, really? Yeah. Where are the knickers? Come on. <laughs> the, the microphone technique, do you actually practice that? I used that? to use one of these boom stands years ago, swinging it around yeah. and stuff. Actually, when I was here first, 20 years ago. Oh my God. I was doing a sign at a place called the Cobra Club tonight. <laughs> and uh, really nice. <laughs> yes, a couple of, couple of old Cobras in tonight. Huh? And uh, this girl was there signing and to Estelle and she said, uh, she said, oh, welcome back to Australia. And I went, oh, it's great. She said, oh, my dad was at your show. Oh. In, uh, <laughs> Well, we've never had... Blended stuff. We've yeah. never had a heavy rocker hit 60 yet. The world has never seen a 60-year-old heavy rocker. The stones are getting up there. Yeah, they're right? getting damn close. What are you going to do when you're 60? You're oh, I don't know. A heavy I didn't crew? think I'd be doing this past 30. God knows. I don't know. It's, I think it's the songs. I don't think it's anything to do with fashion or whatever. As long as I'm writing tunes that people enjoy, I think they'll, uh, they'll turn out. But can you keep that performance level up? Because you've got I don't know about the physical now. side. You know, there's yeah. bits and pieces of going now and again. Which yeah. bits? No, the, the odd bits. The odd bits. Yeah. What are the odd bits in your book, David? The uneven bits. The uneven bits. Yes. 
The, you used to say that White Snake and the Mid-80s were a bit like corporate rock. You were a bit disappointed with how it was Well, it going. turned in that, yeah. It, got a, it got a bit roller coaster ride. It was an old, like a roller coaster. It was hard to get off. It was every day. It was business was going bizarre. It was incredibly successful. And you're thinking, Jesus, you know, this is. We must be doing something right, but it wasn't necessarily musically right. You know, it was but, just but a, a particular time. But I don't understand the term corporate rock. The MTV uh, thing scored at the same time. Mass audience in in the states, which was really the last place for me to conquer. Uh, the uh, the states saved me about three to five years road work. You know, touring across the vastness of it. You know. Just doing MTV and things doing like that. Doing a couple of videos. So, so when you do, so when you get into the corporate rock mode, is that like bland out? Is that what you felt it was for you? Well, at the end of it, yeah, when I had time to uh, to take stock and go, this isn't the reason I got into it. The, the reason I got into it very simply was to express myself. That was it. Yeah. You know. How and do the you, women. How do you? And the women. And the women. Yes. <laughs> so this is why it's called cock rock. <laughs> That's a cucumber stuff, isn't it? Cu uh, did you ever uh, resort no, to rock no, god no, enhancement? No, no, Never? no, invisible aids. <laughs> no, no invisible aids at all. No, no. What about a bad hair day for David Coverdale? Do you oh, know? this morning coming from Brisbane. No, that's and not. No, I saw the front page with that answered airlines. <laughs> you know, the, yes, that's a bit that unfortunate. That nose That's the worst you know, coke habit I've ever seen on that plane. I know, I know. It was like big lines down there. Yeah, it was terrible. So, but your yeah. hair would move. I mean, naturally. No, it didn't this naturally. morning. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> all the other bits did. That didn't. It just stayed there. That's very sad to hear. So, David, uh, <laughs> why did you choose White Snake as a name? Because you know there, there's cock rock. Is that what really? it means? White Snake is a euphemism for <laughs> mammary glands. Yes. That's it. Sorry, it's a euphemism for I was what the hell is up there? <laughs> the it's... L.A. Lakers, you know. It's a euphemism for nice to meet you. <laughs> I'll get this question out of it. It's a euphemism for penis. <laughs> Easy for you to say. It is. But you could, I mean, there, there are other names around. There's St. Pale Nazarene. There, there's, uh, I, there's, that's a good name. Butthole Surface. Day, yeah. Day, yeah. Butthole Surface, Dayglow Abortions. Why didn't you go for an aggro sort of Dayglow Abortions? You've never heard of the day I'd never sleep at night. Oh. But why White Snake? It was a song I wrote when I was with Deep Purple. And fortunately, we didn't record it. And I, I did a solo album uh, called David Coverdale's. White snake, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and it stuck. And it stuck. The and white snake stuck. Yeah. Well, David, we've learnt so much about you tonight. Yes, you have. Indeed. I have been Andrew Denton, and this has been David Coverdale. Fantastic. Fantastic, you guys. What wow. do you reckon, David? An old call? A pleasure. An old call. We'll do Let's the tour, David. Come on. on. This is a little question David and I wrote in a hotel in Pensacola once when we were holed up for a while. It's called, <laughs> what are the tour dates? You ready, Dave? Yeah, we've got Two, three, four, Dave, what are the tour dates? Uh, tomorrow night we play the, uh, the good town of Sydney, and then we're in Melbourne, and then we're in Adelaide, and then I'm off to Fiji. God bless your hearts, and thank you for your hospitality. David Cameron!